can you take me through your journey into religious beliefs in terms of where you started and all the way up to embracing Islam? Yeah, I, I, I mean, apologies in advance, it's not an interesting story. So um, I, I remember, I think I was 22, 21, cycling back from a party one Sunday morning, a party in South London where I lived. And, um, uh, and I was an atheist at that time. And um, I, I was going up a, a street in Islington and I, I saw a very beautiful building. Um, it was a lovely day, Sunday morning. And it was a church, St. Mary's Church, uh, Church of England. A uh, beautiful kind of classical building. So I actually went inside just to have a look around. And I remember um, having, uh, I, can't, I, I don't remember there was a service going on. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But I remember having a very powerful experience of what I understood to be God's love. That it was a very external force that kind of impacted from me from outside. It wasn't something that came from within my heart or uh, uh, in my own being. And it was so powerful that I actually couldn't, didn't like it. It was too much. And I actually just literally ran out of the building. And, but it, it was quite unexpected and quite um, shocking in a way. And uh, I didn't know what to do with this experience because I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a believer at all. I was an atheist, as I say. Um, but it, was, it seemed to be at least a possible experience of God's love coming quite powerfully in my direction. So, of course, I went back there the following Sunday, hoping for a repeat performance and nothing happened, of course. Um, and um, I think it was an experience, a spiritual experience, an authentic one, I think. Um, but it set me uh, on a spiritual journey. And because of my upbringing as a, as a, as a as I didn't have a Christian upbringing, but in my school, it was a Christian school, I suppose, uh, nominally Christian. That was the only kind of spiritual path that I related to and understood. So I eventually went to my local church. Um, and um, after a couple of years of thinking and reading and the Bible and stuff, I did, I did become a Christian um, in the evangelical tradition. Um, there's a great emphasis on God's love and fellowship and spiritual experience. So that kind of not nicely fit in with my own uh, spiritual awakening. Um, but it, it, and that was great, but it, it was problematic because at the same time, because I was, I've always been an avid reader, I, I of course, started to read the Bible, um, which I had no knowledge of. So, um, and that was great. And some of it was really inspiring and moving. And uh, I encountered it as God's word to me, the Bible. But there were other bits of the Bible which disturbed me and raised questions, awkward questions um, about, you know, who was Jesus and and so on. And um, that, that, that sent me on a new journey of looking for answers, which inevitably I, I went to books for. I, I did go to my pastor for answers. I didn't really get any answers, unfortunately. And that was a bit worrying. And so um, I, I went to biblical commentaries and other things. And I became aware of a whole world called biblical scholarship, uh, which raised yet more questions, which I didn't even know were issues. Um, just, just example, the reliability or the unreliability of the Gospels, for example, particularly the Gospel of John. Um, and th this ended up me having quite a schizophrenic experience of being a Christian. On the one hand, I was a committed Christian. I believed that Jesus was Lord and I had a born again experience. I can date it. I can tell you when I became a born again Christian. Um, I went to church on Sundays and I prayed every day and read the Bible, etc. And I believe that Jesus was God and I believe in the Trinity. I believe the Bible was inspired word of God, etc. But on the other hand, I was aware of these quite difficult questions, which called into, into doubt some of, some of these beliefs in quite serious ways. Um, and uh, these issues ultimately led to um, me being quite, uh, I used to see myself as quite a disabled Christian. It was like I couldn't function properly. There was... Yes, I was a Christian, but I couldn't walk um, in a very confident way anymore. I, I was kind of, um, um, and the, the Islam came on the scene when, um, after some years of being a Christian, and ultimately I became a Catholic, actually. When I was at university studying Christian theology, I, um, for various reasons, I, I embraced Catholicism. Um, and my, one of my tutors in patristics, um, who's now sadly passed away, um, received me into the Catholic Church in Mayfair. Um, but a year or so after that, I was becoming quite Islamophobic for a whole bunch of reasons to do with where I'm living and um, 
And I decided to just go to my local mosque to learn more about Islam. Uh, and that mosque was Regent's Park Mosque, which is probably the most famous mosque in London, probably. Um, and this is my local one. And, um, and, and there, with no intention of converting, of course, it was, you know, why would I convert to Islam? <laughs> um, I was a Christian. Um, but I, I discovered something I'd never really experienced before, and that is real Islam from actual Muslims who knew the faith. And um, so I read the Quran in English, translation from cover to cover. I argued with some of them, you know, about who Jesus was. I was a Christian. Um, but then I discovered there were other ways of understanding God, other ways of understanding Jesus, and also a, a, a fantastically rich spiritual tradition in Islam. Um, which at the very least is equally deep and amazing and rich and profound and attractive as anything I'd found in Christianity. So, you know, in Christianity, we have St. John of the Cross, we have the works of St. Augustine, we have the Imitation of Christ by Tim Thomas Akempis, St. Augustine's books, Confession, we have the Cloud of Unknowing, Julian of Norwich, was going through a list of famous mystics, if you like, in the, in the Christian tradition and many, many more, which I'd read. But to find a parallel tradition to that in Islam was remarkable. Why? Because I believe that only through Christianity or through Jesus was there authentic, real Christianity. All the other religions are based on works, righteousness, and all this false stuff I've been told about other religions. It's not true, obviously, about Islam. So, I, I, And then the jewel in this, the thing I really didn't expect to find, the jewel in Islam for me then, and still is in some ways, is this man called Muhammad mm -hmm. on him being to actually learn about this most extraordinary of human beings was a real stunning revelation. I thought, wow, you know, why haven't I been told about him before? Um, and so I read Martin Lings's celebrated Sira, mm. its biography in English, which I really recommend. Yeah. Um, and that was an astonishing eye opener. And of course, then I had this dilemma. Okay, if Jesus, sorry, if, God, if Jesus was sent by God, which obviously I did believe as a Christian, Muhammad, what, you know, he had all the characteristics of authentic messenger, prophet of God, his life, his teaching, his personality, his integrity, his, his sheer amazingness. Um, by what right did I have to affirm the former, not the latter, as sent by God? And this was the dilemma. So I came to the conclusion, actually, they're both sent by God. I know it sounds obvious to Muslims, but to me, it was a difficult, difficult path to tread and to actually come to that point because Islam is associated with, as I thought, you know, Arabs, the Middle East, it's not British, it's not English, you know, all these kind of cultural baggage that I had. And so it wasn't just, just a simple intellectual exercise. If, if I accept that Muhammad was a prophet of God, that had consequences for my life and boy, did it have consequences for my life. <laughs> So um, ultimately, I did say the Shahada, um, and uh, Islam answered many of the profound problems I had within Christianity. Islam had the answers to them, which is, again, amazing. I didn't expect any other religion to actually have answers to the problems, like problem of evil. Islam has uh, the problem of suffering, has, has real answers, which Christianity, unfortunately, doesn't have. And I don't say that with any, I wish, it, I wish Christianity would take these answers and just use them, but it doesn't. It just ignores them. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of a very short, uninteresting explanation of how I got to saying the Shahada. Uh, there were no miraculous events. You went on what seems like you were always interested in books and you went on like an intellectual journey. How long would you mm. describe that period of kind of wrestling with Islam, going back and forth before actually accepting it? So the moment you walked in... About a year and a half. Okay. It was about a year and a half. It was quite a long time, mm. actually. And I... I mean, I, I was in no rush to embrace a religion, which would have meant alienating most of my friends, and it did. And I lost uh, some very close, good friends of mine who, the moment I said my shahada, refused to ever speak to me again. Mm. And um, that was quite hurtful. And um, and they just wouldn't they wouldn't talk about it. It was not like we had an argument and a row. They just ref they they were so appalled by what I did that they refused to speak to me ever again. Mm. So. And, and I suspected something like that would happen because some of my Christian friends, you know, were quite Islamophobic as well. And I crossed over to the enemy camp, so to speak, in their point of view. So I, I guess I, it's not unexpected. But also culturally, I, I, I realized that I had left one culture and, well, not left it. I had acquired 
the possibilities of exploring a new, wholly new culture uh, or cultures, I should say, and to see to see the world from that point of view as well. So to take the Middle East, Palestine, Israel, and so on, to begin to understand the, the experiences and the sufferings and the perspective of Muslims and non-Muslims, the Palestinian Christians, for example, as well, um, was something you don't normally do in the West. You, you kind of just take up, what, Fox News or the Daily Mail or whatever tell you. But So I was able to see the world from a different point of view. And I really liked that, actually. I found that really helpful to move from a um, what a, a recent philosopher who I've been talking about on my channel, uh, Alexander Dugin, would have called moving from a unipolar perspective, from a multipolar to a multipolar perspective. In other words, seeing things from different points of view. I've always found that a fascinating thing to under undertake, is to look for, for different perspectives. Not necessarily embracing them, but understanding that People do, do see, see things differently. And often in the West, we don't understand that. We just think we're right. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the rest of the world, if they don't agree with us, they're just obstinate or bad people. Mm -hmm. It's absurd, of course. Um, so it's a very, very uh, enlightening process for me.